Yo, what's up? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot, and I just finished watching that Lakers versus Celtics game, and I had to come in here and record a video. Are Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown the best young duo in the NBA? Man, they put on a show today. 58 points combined for both of them. Jason Tatum at 30 after being missing for what field that felt like a, a whole month, and now he's been getting back into the groove the past couple games, and Jalen Brown kept doing his thing. 28 points for the man. I believe they shot... 25 for 37 they were insane tonight and if it weren't for Kemba Walker stinking up the joint they probably would have easily won this game but Kemba Walker one for 12 missed the game winner not a surprise I knew that wasn't going in he wasn't on all tonight and I've still been questioning that fit with Kemba Walker and this duo but we're not here to talk about Kemba Walker we're here to talk about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown Jalen Brown, 24 years old. Jason Tatum, only 22. There's that meme going around that he's still 19. But he is 22 years old, about to turn 23 in March. And he's a stud. Both of them are a stud. Jalen Brown continues to get better. And it's great to watch. Jalen Brown, I watched him growing up. He went to my high school back in uh, Marietta, Georgia, Wheeler High School. Got to see him play in high school. And man, he is a stud. And he has gotten better ever since then. He went to Cal. And then he got drafted to the Celtics. And every single year, he's kept improving and improving. Kind of like how I saw how we saw Kawhi Leonard improve every single year. And he still is kind of getting better. But he feels like he's plateaued at such a high level. And Jalen Brown looks to be on that course. And I think they are the best duo that the NBA has. In terms of young guys, I'm not going to talk about LeBron or Anthony Davis. I'm talking young guys under 25. The people I think of, you got Luka and Kristaps. I don't remember Kristaps' age. He's right around the 25 mark. And then you got Ingram and Zion. They're formidable. Um, there's a bunch of small, younger duos. Uh, Lamelo, he doesn't have a counterpart, but uh, so does RJ Barrett. He doesn't have much to go. Trey Young and John Collins. There's a bunch of younger duos, but there's none better than Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. They're already one of the best duos. Oh, yeah, my bad. Uh, the Jokic and Ma Jamal Murray, they're both around 25, 26. Even if you want to throw in Michael Porter Jr., they got a trio there. But there's none better than Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Both are averaging over 25 points. Jalen Brown's been playing like an all-star all year. And yeah, they're they're insane. They're insanely good. And Kemba Walker has will probably be the limitation for how far they can go. But I don't think there's any... This, the sky is the... They're really... I don't even know how to put it into words how good they are. But they are playing at an all-star level, both of them, superstar level, you name it. There aren't many people better than them out there. You know, at the beginning of the year, I looked at the ESPN rankings of top 100 players, and I, I saw Jason Tatum, and he was he was like 10 to 12 on a lot of lists, and I thought that was a little high for him. And I've never I've never been a big Celtics fan. I, I am a New York, well, my family's all New York fans, but yeah, I never thought Jason Tatum was that, that good, but man, he's proven it, and... Jalen Brown is saying that they disrespected him on those rankings, and he's going to skyrocket next year. But that is the best young duo in the NBA, and I don't think there's anything you can say about it. Both of them are knocking down every single shot they see, getting their teammates involved. Hopefully Marcus Smart is, is good. He went down with a non-contact injury this game, although I did see it was a calf strain. Uh, that's what was circulating, but prayers to him. Hope everything's good. He didn't suffer anything major. Kemba Walker will get better. They just have to trade for one more piece. I don't know. I just don't. I'm not a big Kemba Walker fan. That signing was a weird one. I don't think it's going to end up working out. If there's any way for them to get Bradley Beal, I don't know how that whole, how that would all me mesh together. If they had to trade Kemba, that's fine. But I don't see them doing that. So we'll see. But man, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are fun to watch. Sad they couldn't pull off the win at home. Although it's still, still the uh, no fans. But happy to see them play so well and they'll get they'll win these games down the line in their careers like I said both of them are still so young and still have so much potential within them that it's going to be insane to watch as the years go on we're going to break down the rest of the game Dame called his shot he had a game winner over Lori Markkinen to win by two points man that's what Dame does it's it's Dame time that's that's man you can't that's why they pay him the big bucks is to make those shots Dame, another 44 points tonight. Jeez, man. That guy is nasty. Uh, he, he had a big comeback in the fourth quarter to lead, lead this very, very injury-riddled Trailblazers team to a win. And, you know, they can't be losing to the Bulls. Love the Bulls. Love Zach Levine, who might be on the move. 
than the next couple months as the trade deadline and all-star break progresses to see what the Bulls are going to do with him. But Dame needed this win. Trailblazers needed this win. Glad to see Dame pull it off, get that game winner fade away, step through. Well, so that was that was disgusting. Other games tonight, Bucks versus Hornets. Bucks another bad outing. They just lost to the Pelicans last night. Giannis continued to do his thing, 34, 18, and 9. I had him as one of my NBA player props. And if you don't know, at callingershot.com, we do player props every morning that I'm betting on. We're going to be at least over 60% easily that we're cashing on. So if you're into betting, check out that at callingourshot.com. I tweeted out at our Twitter as well, at callingourshot. But yeah, Giannis did his thing, but the rest of the Bucks didn't show up. And Lamelo, I can do a whole other video on this. James Borrego, start the man. I don't know why Devontae Graham starts, why Terry Rozier starts. Lamelo had the best young game of his career. 20, 26, where is it? Uh, 27 points, 9 assists, 4 steals. 8 for 10 shooting. I, you know, whatever. I, I guess I can't make the decisions for the Hornets, but they need to start him. He's their future. Get him in the starting lineup with Gordon Hayward. See where that progresses. Uh, man, the Hornets, Hornets make me shake my head. And as a Knicks fan, uh, who I'm surprisingly happy this year, but geez, man, the Hornets, I don't know what the hell they're doing out there. But I'll let them keep doing their thing. Christian Wood and the Rockets get a, a big W. And quietly, I could make a video on the on the Rockets. They're quietly fun to watch. Like, if you haven't seen a Rockets game, and I know, can't blame you after they traded Harden, but Oladipo, John Wall, and man, my man, Christian Wood, playing like an all-star, another 27 points tonight. Yeah, he low-key should be an all-star this year. It's going to be hard for him to get there because there's so many other big names out in the West with Curry finally back to health, so he's got a spot locked up. But... Quietly, Christian Wood has been an all-star, averaging over, I believe, 23 points a game. He's been killing it, carrying this team, and they, they got a big win over the Pelicans today. And, you know, the Rockets could quietly make the playoffs. Don't think they will because there's a lot of good teams out there, but that's another team that you got to keep an eye out for. Kings versus Heat. Heat with the one-point win. The Heat desperately needed this. Jimmy Butler returned casual 30 points. That's what he does. They needed him back. They couldn't... They were... They could barely score without him. Happy to see them win a low scoring, a low, low, low scoring game. Darren Fox, another 30 point game. He's been low key having a very good year. Happy to see him, him, him progressing. We'll see what the Kings do. I feel like they're going to shake things up as the, as the deadline approaches. I feel like a big trade is going to go down, whether that's shipping Buddy Heald out, getting rid of Marvin Bagley. It's going to be, a, I think they're going to do a big trade this, this upcoming and within the next two months, I bet you they trade someone big. That people didn't expect because I expect their season to start kind of dwindling down and losing some more games as opposed to that they're right around 500 right now and then the last game Grizzlies versus Spurs Grizzlies big 17 point win over the Spurs I did not watch much of this game see John Morant had a double double happy that he see him progressing Grizzlies I feel like everyone on their team scored over 10 points so happy to see that don't believe Jaron Jackson Jr. is back yet so haven't feel felt like I haven't seen him in a while uh, last couple games on the slate, Suns versus Mavericks. That's a close one. Mavericks need that win. Don't know if they'll win it. They're up by two right now. Yeah, I don't know about that. And then Pistons versus Warriors. Absolutely not. I'm not watching that game. Couldn't pay me $100. That's disgusting. Warriors are up 18 at the moment. But that's going to be it for this NBA recap. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown, man, they are the guys. And this has been awesome from Calling Our Shot. Follow us at callingourshot.com or callingourshot.com on Instagram, Twitter, as well as check out our website at callingourshot.com. Back tomorrow to break down some N NBA recaps, as well as probably have an NFL video coming soon about some player props that I'm betting, as well as my score predictions for this upcoming Super Bowl 55, Bucks versus Chiefs. We'll see. It's going to be a good one. This has been Austin. I'll catch you guys soon. Peace.